I love to hear it still back then. Every day, I have to listen to it still, you know? I like to hear the music on the instrument itself, and it helps me just pass by time, and I really enjoy it. I like the part. I enjoy playing the fan because it's part of my culture and I think I should follow it up soon. Well, the instrument gives you a feeling that you can express yourself. I started making fun ever since I was small. I hear the music, so I'd be told the stories from my parents about back in Trinidad and how it was and how they were released around the music. So basically, I kind of follow the footsteps of them. I believe steel band, the medium of steel band, is the simplest way to begin to learn about music. To understand someone is making music from a steel drum is just beyond comprehension, but yet it is done, and done in such fine fashion. From classics to calypso, you can hear anything and everything on a steel or steel pan. You have a lot of types of pans. You have like uh, soprano pans, soprano which play melody. You have alto, like the four voices, soprano, alto, tenor, bass, right? But we have a lot of instruments split up in between. Like in soprano, we would carry like uh, tenors, as we call them, or, or soprano. Then we have alto pans or double seconds. Then you have in the middle range, we will have pans like guitar pans, uh, four pans, cello pans, which do like how a, 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 what you call it, the big orchestras like how a cello in a big orchestra would be, right. Then you come down to bass. It's just like a, just like a, you know, conventional orchestra, right? It's just that our instruments are made of steel. You see, um, it started as a sort of a tambu bambu something. When I say tambu bambu, you know, people coming down the road and chanting and thing, and in those days was tambu bambu. But you see, for some reason, a fella go and pick up a, a, a rusty dustbin cover. And the noise that that make, fella start to just pick up old dustbins. But after hammering it, beating it, beating it, it, it conquer carve. So when it make a conquer carve, they discover that this thing have a note, you know? And I could remember in my boyhood days, I was making pan. When I say pan, it wasn't pan, but I was tuning a car fender. You know those old Ford fenders, those old fenders? Well, it's big and broad, so you get, you have nothing to do there. So you go in and you're ponging that with a hammer until you get a, that, that hump. And then you're going back on that hump and you soften it and you're trying to get what you want, but so so all this is, I mean, it's from there this thing originated, you know. But in preparing the drum for a pan, you have to have proper hammer. Well, now we use a ball. No one really taught me, but um. You go around and see somebody um, hammering, and you take note to where they're hammering, what they're doing. Um, so long as that you have that knowledge to, to, to catch a note, catch a sound, this is important because most times you, you, you learn up that you could make the instrument, but you can't tune it. You know, so. Um, because that person may, may not be able to pick up a song quick. You must be able to pick up a song so you will know um, when you get in at it. So this, 
it was in me and I picked the song up and um, I just started so in, 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 in the, the, the back of my yard down by the well. <laughs> Well, to groove the pan, you have a center punch, but you must blunt that punch. You must, um, you can't go, you can't just purchase a, a punch and, and go to, and say you're making a pan. You, you, you must dull that, you must blunt it, you know? We're gonna take a template of the uh, side of the pan that we're going to make. After, after the drum is cut, you, you, you go to burn. You burn from there. You, you spend 15, 20 minutes according to the, the, the temperature, the amount of fire that you're using. After that pan is cool, you're ready right away for tuning. instrument that came out of the 1930s and um, it was founded by Winston Spree Simon was said to be the first uh, inventor of the pan um, people made music on the streets with all, all kinds of instruments from bamboo sticks to uh, garbage cans and uh, it is said that Winston Spree Simon um, tried out something an experiment on an oil drum he was able to reproduce sound on it and it began evolving from there with instruments being experimented with along the way to the level we are at right now. So the instrument itself in its present format is a lot more superior than it was in the early stages. Yeah, the song quality has improved quite a lot from in the early stages, right? And it's true, a lot of dedication and, you know, trial and error that we arrive at this song today. And I really recommend, you know, the older tuners for, you know, the dedication that they, they put out because it's, without any really, without any help, or assistance, you know, these fellas, you know, try and try and try and really bring it to what it is today. When we were boys growing up, it was not the best thing. I think it was regarded almost like the pool hall is regarded in, in Canada at the same time that if a person went to the pool hall or to the pan yard, they were on their way to hell and damnation. And it certainly changed. It's changed a lot in Trinidad. I can still remember the, the uh, discussion that happened when a steel band first performed in a church in Trinidad. And so it's become far more widely accepted it has lost the tarnished image uh, that it it had because of the association with with violence or with slums and so on 
and I think it has become a really respected instrument. Is, is a festival that is held pre, or, or, as a pre-carnival competition, right? And what happens is that all of our steel bands come out again to show off their calypso playing skill. time is when we get into our Calypsonian set and we get into Kitsch and Sparrow and Blue Boy and these guys there and Crazy and we take whatever they do which is a verse and chorus and we stretch that to 10 minutes long and it shows the ability of the arranger to take this verse and chorus that will amount to less than a minute in some cases there and stretch this piece to 10 minutes. Festival, you have where the bands will play three pieces, which one will be a test piece, one will be a tune of choice, and in most cases, the band select a tune by one of the great composers or classical composers, I should say. We're talking about Beethoven and Tchai Tchaikovsky and Chopin, who, are, who we have, okay, Wagner and these guys. came to Toronto, there must have been, a, well, just a handful, or fewer than that, of steel band people here. So I got involved playing as a lone steel band player in a group that may have consisted of drums and guitar and keyboards and that type of thing. And then later on, as more West Indians came to Canada, we were able to form bands that were exclusively made up with steel band instruments. And I've always been instrumental in trying to put together groups of young people, or people my age or whatever, to play music. From the first Hawaii land in Canada in 1970, I was taken to a Pan Man Spot a band. And from there when I, I met the community and I totally, totally involved. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
But the Carolina Parade, it takes place once a year. It's usually done downtown. Like the whole of downtown is usually blocked off because we have so many people involved. You know, we have masqueraders, we have panics, we have singers. We just have people involved with the bands and off the streets. It's really good. You know, it's just a big band. It's a street party, you know. Whenever I play town music, there is always a reaction, and a positive reaction. And, and people seem to like it a lot. And what I've done is, um, I would play the music that, the pan music that is incorporated with the other instruments, you know, like the such groups as the pan assembly, and you know, and, um, many of, say, Lord Kitchener's music, which is always in tune to pan, you will always hear some pan in there, and I will sort of highlight the, the pan player within that particular song. Because of the fact too many of the steel orchestras in Canada do not record, you find I'm at a disadvantage to promote them, but I do it in my little way. Um, at the Chin Picnic, I always have a local steel orchestra. And what we have been doing, because our facilities are much better now, and the studios are bigger, I can bring in maybe a four-piece steel orchestra. And they come in and they perform live in and on my show. Phantom Lego, uh, our goals and objective uh, is like uh, to promote the steel pan. We're trying like uh, to educate uh, our panis, like uh, try to get them into, into music school. The Tobico board had a, a multiculturalism service committee that looked at all aspects of the changing population in Etobico back in the 70s and early 80s. At the time, uh, Don Banks was chairman of, of that particular service committee and principal of Elmbank School right in this area. And he and I were on that committee and we talked about the changing demographics. And the committee thought that it would be a good thing if we got steel band established in one of the schools, partly in response to the changing demographics, but also the interest in the music that seemed to be growing in Toronto at the time. So in 1982, we got permission to search for instruments. Um, I have um, a written curriculum, which was accepted by the um, Board of Education for the province of Ontario. And I've implemented it so I can offer music credits using steel band instruments uh, for the grade 9 level, the grade 10 level, and the grade 11 level. At one point, I counted as many as 25 schools in the metropolitan area that has a steel band program of one sort or another. Um, at the moment, that number could be a slightly higher or slightly lower. But every, um, every semester, um, I receive calls from different schools who want to get a steel band program going. Well, when I came to Naki, I saw that they had steel band, so I took it as a course, a general course, to see what it was about. And I kind of liked it, so I stuck with it. The pan is, um, it being an idiophonic instrument, you are presented with the notes just before you. So what we do is we write the names of the notes on it, and they can see it very clearly. So. Um, getting access to the instrument and the notes are it's readily available as opposed to maybe a guitar where um, just looking at it is going to be difficult and you could not really write the notes on the fretboard so in some ways it is a lot easier and uh, they're finding uh, my students are finding very little difficulty in uh, learning the instrument you have to learn to read music in order to play steel band but because um, if you intend to take it as a solo career or whatever if you go to a function, people usually give you a sheet of music saying, hey, you gotta learn this and play this sort of function, so you gotta know how to read the music. But that's the only difficulty I found, is trying to read the music. Steel band started with the idea of road teaching. You show me what you know and I'd learn it piece by piece, put it together. So now we're able to use both situations, the formal music training, as well as the road approach, and, and they both work hand in hand and make it easy. is the national instrument of Trinidad and Tobago and it's the only instrument that has been invented in the 20th century. I think that the future of Japan is great, especially abroad, people accept the instrument. I 
I believe that uh, once people begin to realize that it is an instrument that they can learn to play fairly easily, it will lose some of the um, exotic mystery which a lot of people feel. They think it's impossible for them to make music out of these instruments. But as they become more familiar with it, I think it will expand quite rapidly. Everyone who's ever heard the sound of a pan, in my experience, have been excited and exhilarated about it and want to hear more and they can't stop tapping their feet and talking about it. And we want to see more of that. We, in, in these times of stress and, and hard times, we want to make people happy and we know this type of music can do it. <laughs>